So the Russian military has been building up forces near Ukraine for several months now. It's a big buildup and um, it's made a lot of people nervous. Now Ukraine of course has been at war since 2014 with separatists backed by Russia who have taken control of some territories in Ukraine's east after Russia had annexed the Crimean Peninsula from Ukraine. So that war has been going on all that time. This is new, this is different, this is something else. You get a certain amount of narrative that this is all a bluff that they're doing this to get Western states to engage in this conversation about European security. And they're also trying to get Ukraine to implement the Minsk agreements, which ended the worst of the fighting in 2014 and 2015. Uh, another notion is that Russia, frustrated by Ukrainian President Zelensky, who came to office in 2019, having run on a peace platform, um, Russia had expected that he would, in fact, do more to implement Minsk to move forward. That They are now frustrated because since 2019 there hasn't been progress and they want to see regime change, right? So they want to force him from office, either through the threat of force or if they do wage a military campaign, the notion would be that his government would then fall. This is kind of, this is interesting, right? Because if you think about, okay, how does that actually work? What's the theory of victory there? If a Ukrainian government falls because of a, a escalated war with Russia, why on earth would Moscow think that the government that comes in to replace it would be friendlier to Russia, unless they're planning to occupy all of Ukraine? But if Russia were to occupy all of Ukraine, they would face a tremendous amount of resistance, even more global opposition and anger and sanctions. You know, they might get a puppet government in Ukraine if they occupied all of Ukraine, but their broader European security goals would be undermined and the process of occupation would be painful and expensive and miserable. And, you know, it just seems like a crazy thing to try to do. And I think that's one of the reasons people think that this might be a bluff. However, what we learned in 2014, what we should have learned well before 2014, what we see again and again and again, is that the Russian understanding of the situation in Ukraine is often different from the one that one might um, reach sitting in Brussels or in Washington or even in Kiev itself. And they operate on their own understanding of what's likely to happen in Ukraine. Now, arguably, that's an erroneous understanding. It's driven by decision making that's very centralized. Uh, where people are nervous about giving the leadership news that it doesn't want. And there's always been a lot of, I would say, nostalgia and wishful thinking in Moscow when it comes to Ukraine. For that reason, I do think that it's entirely possible that they do think that um, they could force a change of government in Ukraine that is self-sustaining, that doesn't require an occupation, and that will be friendlier to Moscow. The European security order is not uh, adequate to the needs of the present day, and this crisis demonstrates that. You know, you hear a lot in Western countries that there's nothing wrong with the current order, the problem is Russia. But if Russia is the problem, then there's something wrong with the current order because Russia is part of Europe. You can't remove Russia, so you need to find a way to solve this problem. And you solve this problem by adjusting an order that really is out of date. It was built on assumptions of different weapons technologies, different alliance structures, different hotspots uh, for escalation as a result of all of that. You do need new systems and new agreements. So honestly, for that reason, the way forward of negotiations on deployment limitations, exercise limitations, all of that is necessary for a more secure Europe. Uh, honestly, if that comes out of this crisis, it would be a good thing. It would be a silver lining. The combination of offering that, which is very necessary, and also pointing out to Russia the very real risks of escalation and the fact that they could undermine any hope of getting such a, uh, a new order, getting these agreements, is the right way forward. The thing is, the right way forward is not a 100% guarantee of success. So simply saying this is the right way forward does not mean that I promise you that if you do this, there will be peace.